1999, arguably the best year in recent cinema history, marked by fearless storytelling and groundbreaking films. Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. During this period, Malkovich, filmmakers Malkovich. were willing to take risks, Malkovich. resulting in a collection of films that not only entertained and had commercial appeal, but also challenged audiences and explored thought-provoking themes. But let's take a closer look into these films. What is one crucial similarity that they all share? They were all made on mid-size budgets. It's a sector that lies somewhere in between of blockbusters and independent art house films. This kind of cinema gives us stories that grab us and make us think without needing a huge budget or being too niche. You are one twisted fuck. Nope. I'm just an ordinary guy with nothing to lose. And they strike a perfect balance between artistic depth and entertainment. These were the stories that truly resonate, the ones that tend to get lost in the extremes of today's film world. Today's movie industry is split into two, big flashy blockbusters and small art house indie films. Most of the time, art house movies struggle to reach a wide audience. Their niche appeal and limited distribution mean that many people miss out on these films. Conversely, mainstream cinema has increasingly become dominated by blockbuster theme park movies. What we're missing is the middle ground. These middle budget movies used to be where filmmakers could really get creative and take chances with their stories. Oh, the frogs falling from the sky. Now, with this middle section almost gone, we're losing out on a lot of unique and interesting movies that could appeal to a wide audience while still offering something new. Cinema is dying, is being thrown around a lot these days. In fact, it is this mid-sector that is dying. Picture the film industry as a sandwich. With the mid-section gone, we're left with the bread ends. While there's still something to consume, the experience lacks the richness and satisfaction the middle once provided. But I don't think that cinema is dying. I think it's trying to reconnect. The 1908 film The Thieving Hand tells the story of an armless beggar who gets a prosthetic arm with a will of its own. The arm pickpockets people without the beggar knowing. This leads to the beggar being jailed. In a surprising twist, the arm finds its original owner, a thief, while in jail. Over a century later, another story unfolds, I Lost My Body. It's an animated tale about loss and the quest for belonging. Both hands are separated from their bodies, seek to reconnect, to find wholeness. Just as the hand seeks connection, cinema itself grapples with its role in our new transformed era. In the past, the movie industry was like a bustling market full of different ideas, releasing hundreds of films every year. Take 2007 for example, another standout year for cinema. While the biggest box office hits were, as expected, high-budget films, the success wasn't limited to just these spectacles. Mid- and low-budget movies showed that not all hits needed massive budgets to capture the audience's attention. 2007 was notably a fantastic year for mid-budget films, not only winning critical acclaim, but also doing well at the box office. These films, along with art house gems, found their own audiences. The year was marked by a diversity of films, achieving various levels of success, supporting a dynamic and varied industry, rich in different voices. Fast forward to the present, and things have changed dramatically. The number of films being made has dropped, with the focus now on a few big budget movies. Mrs. Wang, are you with us? I am paying attention. Studios like A24 continue to produce films that, while often lower in budget, carry the essence of mid-budget storytelling, suggesting a potential revival fueled by audience demand for original stories However, as of now, these instances are exceptions rather than the norm. Consumer behavior too has evolved, with many choosing the convenience of streaming from home. 
TV shows today offer the gradual, in-depth exploration of characters and story arcs that movies used to provide. Yet, they too are feeling the impact of the industry's evolving preferences. And it's changing the very nature of what gets produced and distributed. Their focus has shifted towards properties that promise high returns, franchises, sequels, adaptations, with a preference for the familiar over the innovative, the proven over the new. It used to be that the movie world was like a big, beautiful garden with all sorts of flowers. Now it's like a garden where only the biggest trees get enough light, leaving less room for variety. Today's cinema features a select group of filmmakers who embody the essence of mid-budget storytelling, blending creativity with mass appeal to produce mainstream yet creatively rich cinema. This middle sector, though still present, is tightly held by these few pioneers. But what about the up-and-coming filmmakers? Occasionally, Hollywood opens its doors to new and innovative talents, this is Bella. showcasing the potential for diversity and originality in mainstream cinema, but these chances are few and show that we need more inclusivity. No. She's an experiment. If the industry gates were more open and democratized, we might discover the next generation of groundbreaking filmmakers. Our future Paul Thomas Andersons, Quentin Tarantinos, Coen Brothers, Alfonso Cuarons, and Richard Linklaters. So, how can we achieve this? How can the industry doors swing wider open? The move towards decentralization and democratization is reshaping many areas today. For example, Bitcoin is changing finance from old school banking to a more open system. The traditional way of making films, with its need for agents dealing with script rejections and the difficulties of distribution, is also beginning to shift. This process used to put up big obstacles and depend a lot on a few key people in the industry, leaving many talented creators out. But now things are evolving. These changes are empowering filmmakers and creators to share their stories on their terms. Moreover, the introduction of instant feedback on digital platforms offers a unique opportunity to refine their work based on real-time audience reactions, further democratizing storytelling. AI stands at the forefront of democratizing filmmaking. Imagine the possibility of crafting movies without traditional crews or hefty resources, using only your vision and AI tools. This is where cinema is headed, a future where anyone can be a filmmaker, with AI providing the tools to transform creative visions into reality, potentially reviving this middle ground by equipping indie filmmakers with tools to craft stories that can engage wider audiences. With AI, constraints like budget, location, and visual effects are minimized, encouraging the exploration of bold, innovative narratives that were once too challenging or costly. This shift allows for a greater diversity of voices to be heard in cinema. AI can not just change the way how we make films, it can redefine what films can be. The concept of artificial intelligence in filmmaking is often viewed with skepticism, seen by some as a potential threat to human creativity. It's a familiar dichotomy in the face of technological advancement. I think some people love to think that we live in an apocalyptic age, and we just don't. Let's go back to 1940s. The Nazis are coming to power. They're going to destroy the world. The atomic bomb was dropped. Oh my God, we're going to have nuclear Armageddon. Well, it didn't happen. Bad things happened, but not that, and it didn't end the world. Then in the 1970s, there was the so-called population bomb. We're going to run out of food. Well, then you had the Green Revolution, and that didn't happen. One of my favorites is in the year 1000, the Pope banned crossbows because with the invention of the crossbow, they thought, oh my God, a peasant can kill a knight. The world is absolutely going to end now. And I'm not trying to minimize the significant ecological, technological, political issues that we face. But every generation, at least a slice of the population, seems almost to want to believe that they live in the most apocalyptic time. Freud wrote about this. Annihilation anxiety is seductive because it allows our unconscious minds to process that which our conscious minds cannot, which is our own mortality, our own deaths.
For more than a hundred years, people have predicted cinema's end, first with sound, then TV. Turn the set on, select your channel, see all color shows in living color. Followed by superhero movies and streaming services, and now AI. However, cinema has survived all these threats, proving its resilience. It continuously adapts and keeps evolving with the times. Cinema's enduring power lies in its ability to connect with viewers in innovative ways, thus ensuring its longevity. Looking ahead, AI's role in art doesn't have to be about replacing human artists. Instead, think of AI as a new tool, kind of like a high-tech paintbrush. This doesn't mean artists will become obsolete. Rather, AI could help them create things that were impossible before. So, the future might not be AI versus human artists, but about how they can work together to push creativity to new heights, allowing for a broader range of stories to be told, many of which might have remained untold in a more resource-constrained environment. The rise of AI in filmmaking echoes the revolutionary spirit of past movements like the French New Wave, poised to usher in a new era of cinematic expression. Just as the French New Wave broke the conventions of its time to redefine what films could be, AI stands on the brink of a similar transformative moment. This AI New Wave holds the potential to not only redefine the art form, but also to enrich it, ensuring that the future of film is as diverse, dynamic, and deep as the human imagination itself. In relation to cinema, AI is just the latest step in this never-ending journey. History has shown us that progress is inevitable, a natural part of our journey from cave paintings to cinematic masterpieces. It's a big part of everything that we do. It's way more crucial than who owns what idea. Progress just keeps going, no matter what. The future of storytelling, particularly in cinema, is poised for a significant transformation. The challenge and opportunity lie in balancing the preservation of our artistic roots with embracing the tools that expand our creative capabilities, ensuring that cinema continues to evolve as a vibrant, inclusive, and dynamic form of art, and continues to explore uncharted territories. Woo